there's a little village just a little bit north of Portsmouth where a recipe for the most wonderful bread in the whole world was created kind of by accident. Each person who lived in the village had a particular job, one thing they were each responsible for. Every day, the people would wake up and they would have a simple breakfast of the nice bread that the village baker had made. Then the people would do their jobs, get some rest and start over the next day. It was a very nice town and everything worked just fine. One night, a big storm rolled into town. The wind was so strong it rattled the windows and the people could feel their beds shake. It blew so hard that some trees fell down. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, but a very big tree fell on the bakery that night and it ruined the oven that the baker used to bake the bread. When the people of the village woke up, the storm had passed. They went to their front doors to get the very nice bread that the baker always made for breakfast and found that the bread wasn't there. It was a bit confusing, but these were fairly resilient people. So they skipped breakfast and moved on with their day, just a little grouchier than usual. Skipping breakfast will do that. While everyone else went to school and work, the baker stayed home alone and felt really awful. The oven was broken and the bakery was wrecked. As the days went on, things felt less and less nice for everyone. There weren't many friendly gatherings and everyone's work got a little less perfect. The baker especially was feeling down. She never even came out of her house anymore. She used to have the nicest, shining and happy smile that made everyone else smile when they would pass by her. Now she was just sad and she just wanted to be home alone. One day, a while later, the town potter was on his way to his shop and he bumped into the painter who was carrying his art supplies down the sidewalk. It didn't go well. They kind of yelled at each other and, it got, and they both got all worked up. It was getting worse and worse until a child came by and said, pause. The potter and the painter stopped and looked at the child and the child said, Ripples come from bad and good, and you need some bread. This was a very confusing sentence. The potter looked at the child with a raised eyebrow, and then he looked over to the painter, who was looking across the street, past both of them, at the closed sign on the bakery. Ever since that bakery closed, things haven't been quite right, the painter said. The potter slowly nodded his head. You're right, the potter said to the child, who was now smiling at them both. The child bent down to pick up a large piece of pottery that had fallen to the ground in the collision. It was covered in color splashes from the paint the painter had been holding. And the splashes were beautiful, and the pot itself was beautiful too. The child asked if he could have the piece of pottery so he could give it to the baker as a gift. Both the potter and the painter nodded their heads. As the child passed a lovely row of large maple trees, a woman boiling sap from the trees called out and asked where he was going with the large pretty pot. I'm going to the baker to give her this gift. The woman thought of the bread and the shiny smiled baker and she ran into her house and then came back with a jug of golden syrup and walked beside the child. The pair came across a farmer who was milking cows same as every day and the farmer asked them, what are you going to do? We're going to the baker to give her these gifts, said the child. And the farmer ran into his house and joined them carrying a big package of butter that he'd made. They continued on and an old woman spotted them through her kitchen window. She called to them, what's going on? The child told her they were taking gifts to the baker and soon she was beside them on her little electric scooter with jars of strawberry jam in the basket that she had made in June. Slowly but surely, people from the next block and then the next street beyond gathered up gifts to bring as they journeyed over to the baker. And before long, most of the town had arrived at her little house with their arms filled with presents. 
When the baker answered her door, the last thing she expected was to see a parade of gift bearers. These are for you, said the child, because you made beautiful bread for all of us for so long, and everyone in this town is so grateful. The baker almost started to cry. It was such an unexpected gesture. She looked at the child and said, thank you. And she brought the pot and other gifts into her kitchen and set them on the counter. The baker stood there looking at the pot and something started to grow in the middle of her chest. It was a warm, sweet feeling. It made her want to push her hands into freshly risen dough. So she pulled out her flour canister and started to create. Realizing she was out of sugar, she instead used some of the sweet maple syrup the neighbor had brought. Inspired by the designs on the beautiful pot, she carved a design into the top of the shaped loaf before baking. In a few hours, the smell of fresh bread was drifting from the small wood oven in her house. And as soon as her neighbors smelled that bread, they realized just how much they had missed it being a part of their day. When her shop was ruined, the baker never imagined how much her bread had meant to the town. She had been sad and felt like she didn't have the energy to find her way back. Now, as she looked at all the people from the town, she realized she was a part of something wonderful. She realized all at once that losing her oven wasn't what had made her so sad. Being a part of something bigger than herself was the reason she had been so happy for so many years. And when that stopped, she lost the source of her joy. But now they had all come back. She sliced loaves of bread. Everybody came and they smeared thick layers of butter and that the farmer had brought and jam that the old woman had made. They marveled at the painted pot and one by one, everyone in that town realized that each of them was part of one big, beautiful family. And once again, for many days and years to come, everything was just fine, but the bread, Oh, the bread tasted even better than it ever had before. And the baker was super, super shiny, shiny again. <laughs>